Hi, good afternoon. Today we will uh, state and prove the fixed point theorem for group actions, not in analysis, and give a couple of applications. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, so let G be a finite group. Okay, and X also, let's assume it's a finite set. We are assuming G acts on X. So what, what you have seen is that the X is written as a disjoint you know, orbits. Okay, some Y of X where X is where is over a transversal. What is a transversal? It is something like X1 to XR said that orbit of these are the disjoint orbits i not equal to j and our x is going to be union of ox okay these are the all the di distinct orbits of g action very good okay so we have equal to o of x as x varies over t this is all known all right okay now what we want to do is we are going to use this observation to prove the so-called fixed point theorem. So we are going to assume mod g is p power n where p is a prime. So one usually call such as your groups g as a p group. Okay. For me p group is the order is p power n. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah. Now and of course, X is a G acts on X on your finite set X. Okay. Then what we want to say is this car, number of elements in X is congruent to this fixed set, set X, which also we are denoted by same as XG mod P. This is what you want to prove. Okay, let us recall what does it mean? XG, the fixed point set is set of all X so that they are not moved by any element. That is G dot X is X for every G in G. Okay, they remain fixed under any group, any action. Yeah, right. Is that clear to you? Yeah, the proof is very easy. Let us go through the proof. Now, so keeping the above notation, I know <coughs> mod x e equal to mod y x as x varies over a transversal. Okay, I'm keeping the above notation. Now, let us see when x belong to xg, when does it belong? This means, yeah, g dot x is x for every g. This is same as saying orbit of X is singleton. You understand that? Yeah. So let us break T into union of, oh, I have not used yes, right? Singleton and P where S equal to collection of all X in T so that orbit of X is singleton. And P is T minus S, all other elements. That means if X belong to P, orbit of X is greater than one. Do you understand this? Okay, these are all singleton orbits. Okay, therefore I can split the sum into two things. Okay, X in singleton orbits mod OX, Plus, this is OX plus X is in P. Is that okay? Right. Now, let us see. Suppose X is in P, that means orbit of X is greater than 1. Now, we know that 
let us look at g for x and p okay let h be the stabilizer of x and g then we know mod g is equal to okay let us recall again quickly y of x is in bijectic corresponding with g by h the stabilizer therefore mod g is going to be mod h into mod y x which is mod g by h number of cosets is that okay right now we know this is greater than one and this is order p power n and this object is greater than one so what can i conclude this must at least be p right and therefore mod o x is at least p is that clear yeah because this is the divisor of p power n therefore in this equation okay so each of these fellows is divisible by p each of these summand is divisible by p therefore i have but what is this this is all one okay how many ones are there as many ones as in yes but notice that mod s is nothing other than mod x power g because it's a set of all fixed points of this you understand this object is same as this okay this sum happens to be this therefore i have mod x is congruent to mod x power g mod p do you understand this pause review proceed okay now for group action this is going to be whenever i start there is there is a p group involved what is a p group its order is some p power n for some prime p whenever a p group group is involved you should always be on the lookout whether you can employ the group action uh, sorry the fixed point theorem yeah let us see so the, one of the first thing is this you know that if a if g is any finite group and a is an element of g then order of a is same as the order of the cyclic subgroup generated by a okay this is a divisor of order of g therefore that because this is a subgroup by lagrange theorem it must be divided right so there is a question if d is a divisor of mod g does there exist an a in g such that order of a equal to okay in general the answer is no and there are examples you can find in textbooks i am not going to give any such okay but there is a special case in which if the divisor is a prime that is if d is a prime then i can say there is an element a whose order is p the prime okay that is known as cauchy's theorem so cauchy's theorem says the following let g be a finite group okay and p a prime and p divides mod g then there exists an a in g such that r of a equal to p okay so whether group is by you know a b in non abelian doesn't matter it has to be finite and the prime must divide the order of g then we are assured the existence of an element of order p okay there are classical proofs the proofs first to prove it for abelian groups and then do induction to prove the general case also you can see such a proof in my minimal counter example video okay technique of minimal counter example but let us give a proof using group action this proof is due to some mathematician by name i think mckay okay right so what we do let us look at see when when is an element a in g is of order p if only if 
a to the power p is identity that is a into a p times equal to identity all right so what we look at is the set yes the set of all elements g1 g2 gp where again g cross g this is p times with what property g1 g2 gp must be identity that is the product of this ordered in p tuple must be identity of the group is that clear to you okay right okay now what do i want so i want a group action and i want to use fixed point okay so how do i get it so the fixed point should be points so that a to the power p must be e so let us look at it how can i get it that is if it's a fixed point meaning g1 must be equal to g2 must be equal to gp right so can you think of such a group which will make sure okay if the g sorry call it uh, sigma okay i think i gave the game g1 to gp equal to the p tuple if and only if g1 equal to g2 equal to gp can you think of such a group sigma is some group element okay some group notice that it should also be a p group because we know fixed point theorem is applicable only if the group which acts must be a p group okay it must be easy now to guess yeah right so let okay this is up to you how do you want to think of it let us think of the cycle 1 2 p what is the cycle this is sigma therefore sigma squared it will be 1 goes to 2 2 goes to therefore 2 go 3 p and 1 you understand that 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 and p minus 1 goes to p and p goes to 1 this is your sigma right now this is a cycle okay and let's look at the group generated by this this is a cycle therefore sig this is what make it is so what are the elements sigma sigma squared and sigma power p minus 1 p minus 1 and identity is that clear so one goes to 2 therefore one will go to 3 by under sigma squared one will go one goes to 2 under another sigma 2 goes to 3 therefore 1 goes to 3 and so on you understand that okay now i want h to act okay on x okay i want h to act on x how do i do that obvious sigma dot g1 g2 remember this is a p tuple is not product this is equal to g2 g3 gp and g1 do you understand this yeah you are simply permuting that is same as saying g of sigma 1 g of sigma 2 g of sigma p okay and see sigma acts you know how to sigma squared acts sigma squared will act as g2 will go to g3 and so on therefore g1 will go to g3 g2 will go to g4 etc yes okay now you have to make sure it's an action what does that mean i have to make sure whether this is in x okay but that's very easy to check because this is same as saying g2 g3 gp dot g1 whether this is equal to identity this is all you are asking but that's easy because g1 g2 gp is identity right therefore break it like this g1 into g2 gp this identity that means g1 is the inverse of this element g2 to gp therefore g2 to gp times g1 is also identity therefore sig okay sigma maps x to x itself and therefore sigma squared maps and so on do you understand that okay 
Now I want to know when it an element G1 to GP in X is fixed. Let me call it simply G tilde equal to G tilde. What does that mean? This means this is G2 to GP G1. This is the ordered P tuple. This must be same as G1 G2 ordered P tuple GP. When does this happen? G2 must be G1 and G3 must be G2 and so on. Therefore, this happens if only if G1 equal to G2 equal to GP. Do you understand this? Yeah. Right. Therefore, what are the if if a sigma fixes G tilde, you can see sigma squared also fixes G tilde and so on. Therefore, okay, any element of this form will be there. Therefore, G tilde sigma dot G tilde is G tilde if and only if all the coordinates are equal. Is that clear? But remember this product, call it as a general G, then what do I know? G1, G2, GP is identity, is same as saying G to the power P is identity. Now do you have an idea? This is what we wanted, we got it. Is it all right? Okay. Now, let's look at X sub G. Is there, okay, what are they? X sub G is all elements which are fixed, that is, G dot sigma tilde must be equal to sigma tilde, right? I claim this is not empty. Why it's not empty? Because let us look at this element E E P times this belong to X. Therefore, call it E tilde. So E tilde belong to this. Therefore, this is not empty. Is that okay? Therefore, by the the fixed point theorem, what do I know? This is congruent to, yes, sorry, not G, this is H. Okay, our group is, the acting group is called H, okay? Okay, this. Mod P. You understand? Now let's look at what is order of X. Notice that this consists of all ordered n tuple G1 to GP minus 1 to GP so that the product G1, G2, GP equal to identity. Notice that G1 can be arbitrary, G2 can be arbitrary, GP minus 1 can be arbitrary, but GP cannot be arbitrary because when I multiply this by GP, it must be identity. That means GP must be the inverse of these elements. So the first P minus one elements can be any arbitrary element of G, but the last element is predetermined. You cannot do anything. Once you give me a G1 to GP minus one, GP is spread is sealed. You understand? Therefore, how many elements are there? N to the power P minus one elements. Now remember P, is a prime, therefore P is greater than one. Therefore, greater than or equal to two if you want. Therefore, N to the P, P minus one will be greater than or equal to one. Now, P divides in, therefore P also divides in N P minus one. Therefore, P divides in P minus one. You understand that? Yeah? Therefore, what does it say? Modulo P, the left side is zero. Okay. Therefore, what should I get? The fixed points should also be zero mod P because these two are congruent model of P. You understand this? Right. But can mod X power H be zero? Then also it's a true statement, but that cannot be because we know it is greater than or equal to one. You understand that? Because E tilde belong to fixed point set. Therefore, this is greater than or equal to one and it is congruent mod zero mod P. That means mod X power H should at least be greater than or equal to P. You understand? But P is a prime, therefore P is greater than or equal to two. Therefore, there exists an element here, which is of the form G, 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 P times is XH. 
and g is not equal to g tilde is not equal to e tilde yeah that means what this g is not identity but g to the power p is identity now since p is a prime the order of g must be a divisor of p and g is not identity but g power p is e therefore order of g is p okay i hope you understood the proof pause review and then proceed okay so before we we will give one more application i am slightly cheating you this is an application which i actually falls under the name silos theorem but let's just do it at that so let me prove another theorem it may look out of the place but let's say let's do it suppose g is a finite group p is a prime okay let p power n divide mod g and p power n plus 1 does not divide mod g and assume n is greater than or equal to 1 okay so n is the highest power of p so that p power n divides mod g so that p power n plus 1 cannot divide mod g right therefore i can write mod g if you want like p power n into m where p and m are co prime is that okay right now suppose h is a subgroup of g and s is a subgroup of g so that the order of h is p power k k may be less than or equal to n and order of s equal to p power n the highest power n okay p power n you understand this so assume there okay let h and b subgroups of h and s be subgroups of g so that r of h is p power k k may be less than or equal to n r of s is p power n is that okay right what we want to prove is then h is contained in g s g inverse for some g in g that is h is contained in the conjugate of s is the result clear statement okay now let's give give a proof do you remember when i did cayley's theorem i said it is important we should learn how to work with quotients okay the action on quotients right now let us understand what do i want i want to say h is contained in g s g inverse so what should be the quotient now there are two quotient spaces available to me g mod h g mod s right so and remember i need to use fixed point theorem i need a p group and again h is a p group s is a p group so i should let one of them act on something so what do you guess i should do which should be the correct quotient space i should work with remember h must be contained in g in s g inverse that means let us put it g inverse h okay is contained in yes g inverse or g inverse h g is contained in s you understand i am just rewriting the same thing do you have any guess that is same as saying hg okay let us leave it yes, let it be there i'll come to it okay so do you have any guess yeah let h act on g mod s how okay h acts on the quotient gs to produce the quotient hg the quotient of hg with respect to s you understand this this is an action 
because when identity operates up identity operates all right okay now this is my space what is my space g mod yes what is the order of this this is m because g is mod g is p power n into m with the p and m co prime all right therefore m is not congruent to zero mod p right you understand okay so i want to look at the fixed fixed points of this action so when you you follow this sure right now i want to know when gs in g mod s is a fixed point for the h action right let us look at so what does that mean for every h in h h g s must be g s but this is same as saying g inverse h g s equal to s but this is same as saying g inverse h g is an element of s because remember s is a subgroup but this is same as saying h belong to g yes g inverse is that right g is g inverse right so what i have done i have shown that this is a fixed point for the h action if and only for each h h is an element of gs g inverse that is same as saying that is gs is a fixed point you for only if h is containing gs g inverse you understand that okay now how do i know such a fixed point exist remember fixed point theorem says this is congruent to x mod h because h is the group action mod p now this is not zero therefore this is not zero mod p you understand that therefore okay this is not this is okay this has m elements m is not zero mod p therefore this cannot be zero mod p you understand that therefore there should at least exist one element mod h is greater than or equal to 1 do, do all of you agree with that yeah okay there should be at least one element so let gs be that element okay then what we do we find h is contain gs g inverse so do you think i have proved it okay now there is something very interesting in this see my h i assume p power k but k is less than or equal to n therefore suppose h is also equal to p power n r of h is also equal to p power n what does this say then it says that h is contained in some g yes g inverse but this is of order p power n this also order p power n therefore what do i conclude h equal to gs g inverse so what does this say it says that if mod g is okay order of g is p power n to m with the m and p relatively prime and if i have two subgroups h and s so that each of them have order p power n then they are conjugate yeah do you understand this very good let us stop here please go through this i gave very two simple minded applications 
okay we will use we will, we will come come back with the zero theorem later okay i hope you enjoyed